Hello folks, welcome to the next episode of General Relativity. I'm your host, Rifat Bari, graduate student of physics at Brown University. And my name is Shabon Wajib Bari, and I'm doing my bachelor's in math and physics at NYU. Today I'm very excited to teach you about contravariant and covariant tensors, the big two ideas behind tensors in GR. But first, let me give you a motivation. Why? Why are we learning this? Because know. remember that in the last lecture, our question was very simple. Can we identify a transformation that tells us whether a manifold is curved or flat. So given a certain manifold, for example, a sheet of paper, can you figure out whether there's a metric that describes that manifold as being curved or as being just a flat sheet of paper with Cartesian coordinates? I have a question. Yes. You know that test where are you, for example, like that analogy where on a flat sheet of paper, if you draw a triangle, mm -hmm. obviously the angles always add up to 300, uh, 180 degrees. Yeah. But if you draw it on a, a sphere, on a spherical piece of paper, you can make a triangle. Yeah, very good. Whose angles add up to more than 180. Is, That's right. Is this where we want to identify curved surfaces. That's a very good test. To to this. That's a very good test. In fact, if you have a right triangle here, then what can we apply? Pythagoras theorem. And this is the Pythagorean theorem. Oh, wonderful. Because what is the distance of the hypotenuse? If not, delta mn dx mu mm -hmm. dx mu. mu. Really, I should put mu nu here, mu nu. So, so this is just the Pythagorean theorem. And so this is the exact test that you just told me about. So very good job. Let's start with contravariant tensors. Now, the classic example of a contravariant tensor is as follows. It's a small step. That's it. It's a small step. Isn't that like dx? Let me show you what I mean. Let's say you transition between two coordinate frames. Contravariant vectors are very simple. A small step, a small differential step. So let me show you what I mean. Let me take a small step in the x coordinate frame here. And let me call this small differential step dx to the m power. So this okay. is the iconic example of a contravariant tensor is dxm. My question for you is simple. What is this small step, dxm, in the y-coordinate frame? Hmm. Would it just be dxm prime? Okay, that's a good idea. So to transition to the y-coordinate frame, all I need to use is, well, transformation. I need to see. I know what dxm is, right? Mm -hmm. I want to find what dym is, right? Yeah. Okay, well then I can see how much each dy responds to each dxm yes. and then multiply by that change and sum over all such m coordinates. So the general example is instead of dym, I'm going to replace that with the coordinates of a certain tensor in the new coordinate frame y is equal to partial y partial x partial y partial x and now you have to realize that I made a mistake. What is my mistake? Hmm. Here, I should be summing over different coordinates. I, this is a dummy index. The index I sum over should be a dummy index that does not show up in the final answer. So I cannot I sum over M. I have to sum over a dummy index. I'll call it P. This P, I sum over it so it does not show up in the final answer. But either. why? Why can't it show up? Because for the same reason, when you integrate over a function with a certain variable, that variable will not show up in the final answer because you integrate it away. I see. With respect to the limits. That's the idea. So this is a dummy variable. I'm going to write partial y m partial x p and then write over here v to the p power. There you go. That's all you need to know about contravariant tensors. Very interesting. The last thing you have to know is notice 
that this is a superscript, just like you pointed out in the beginning. So the general symbol for contravariant tensors is a superscript as follows. Right. One more thing to annotate is that obviously when you're taking the derivative of a multivariable function with respect to some parametric variable, of course, by the chain rule, it looks extremely similar to this. So you have partial z partial x dx dt plus partial z partial y dy dt. Or in general, if you just want to sum over it, you just have partial f or partial y as written here over partial xm dxm dt for m being 1 and 2. So this can be generalized to any number of variables actually, but I'm writing 2 for brevity. So this is basically the same concept as this, and that's why this relation is true. Wonderful. Now let's move on to our next kind of tensors, our last kind of tensors, co covariant tensors. Let's start again with a certain manifold. Now let's talk about the iconic covariant tensor. The iconic covariant tensor is, what was the iconic contravariant tensor? Dx superscript m, right? Wrong. It was a small step. Oh, right. The iconic covariant tensor is a small change. Now here's what I mean. Given a scalar field S, what is a scalar field? A scalar field is something like temperature. It exists everywhere in the room. Right, but there's no direction. It exists at every single point, obviously, That's but right. it just has magnitude, like 20 degrees Celsius. That's right. Uh, but wind is like a vector field because you can say it's going northeast. Temperature, you can't say, is going in any specific direction. So That's it's a right. scalar field. That's right. Every point in this room has a temperature. Of course. So that is a scalar field. And taking the derivative of a scalar field gives you the idea of covariant tensors. Now, this is the derivative of the scalar field in the x coordinate frame. Now, my question to you is, what is the derivative of our scalar field in the y coordinate frame? In the x coordinate frame, it's this. Mm -hmm. What is it in the y coordinate frame? Wait. Is it superscript m or lowercase m? It's superscript m. Oh, gotcha. Now tell me why. Because a superscript m, I just told you, is a contravariant vector. Right, and that's a small but change, right? one over a superscript m is equivalent to a covariant tensor. So in oh, other words, right. one over partial x to the m power is the same thing as writing it in the covariant form. That's interesting. But how would we... Oh, no, never mind. I just realized. So, the question is, what is the change of our scalar fields in the y-coordinate frame? And the answer is exactly what you had written down for us in terms of the multivariable chain rule. It's going to be partial x, partial s, partial x. Now I need a dummy variable. I'll call it p, partial x, partial p partial y, partial m, and I'm just summing over my dummy variable. Great! The general form of a covariant tensor will be, let me call it w, so these are the coordinates of our covariant tensor in the new coordinate frame, and I'm going to write m, but this is wrong because it should be downstairs, because 1 over a contravariant is the same thing as a covariant, and this is equal to, let's call this w to the p times partial xp partial y m. This is our final answer for the general form of a covariant vector. And this is our final answer for the general form of a contravariant vector. And Wonderful. let me just finish by saying that this was the general symbolization for a contravariant vector and, and this is right. a general symbolization for a covariant vector. wonderful okay thank you for learning with me today and that's it see you next time